What is up guys? Welcome back to another Shamshir Sound video. Today we're going to be talking about all the performance tricks and tips you can use to improve CPU performance, free up RAM, clean up your project, and also free up GPU resources. If you guys are enjoying these quick videos, remember to smash up the like button and let's get started. First, we have a project here opened. And when we open a project or when you're going through your project, often there are many windows that are open. If we go ahead and move the playlist, we can see a lot of effects, maybe synthesizers that are open. And these can take up RAM resources. They can also take up GPU resources. What you can do is I'm going to go to view and close all plugin windows. Now, before we do that, we can see 2200 megabytes. Let's close all plugin windows. And now we're down 1886. So just like that, we've shaved about 400 megabytes from RAM. And it could be more depending on how big your project is. Another tip to free up RAM is purge unused audio. Often we throw in tons of clips, audio clips into our project that we're no longer using that we went ahead and took off the playlist. Go ahead and go to tools, macros, purge unused audio clips. This will get rid of all those audio clips. Don't worry, they're still safe on your hard drive, on your SSD. It's just removed from the project if they were not used on the playlist, if they were not linked to something on the mixer track. Next is remove all Edison instances. This will free up RAM. If you're no longer using Edison, you've already bounced your audio, make sure you do because there's no undo for this. Go ahead and go to tools, macros, and remove all Edison instances. It's gonna warn you that there's no undo and this will save you some RAM here. No changes because I wasn't using Edison, but if you had a bunch of Edison instances, you're gonna save up a lot of memory. Next, let's talk about CPU. Over in options, audio settings, ImageLine recommends a buffer size of 10 to 40 milliseconds. Going lower than that, you do get good response time, but you're gonna highly likely get crackles, artifacts, so a higher buffer size is going to give you that pre-delay so that the project plays back smoothly. Setting a size of 10 to 40 milliseconds is recommended. If you get crackles, increase that. What you can do also is toggle on mix in buffer switch, which I have on, and triple buffer. If it does not help, turn those back off. Now for the device, I'm using FL Studio ASIO, but what I prefer to use is my ASIO device. I'm using a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 audio interface. And so the best performing one for me would be my Focusrite. So make sure you double check. It is important that you use a good audio interface that has ASIO drivers that plays a big role in your performance, your real-time performance. If you can't, then FL Studio ASIO is a good second option. Here in the buffer length, we can see that I selected 1024, but I could select 2048 also to improve the real-time performance, sacrificing some responsiveness. Multi-threaded, so you will get a potential boost with multi-threaded. Of course, modern CPUs have multiple cores and threading as well, so I would toggle this on multi-threaded generator processing and multi-threaded mixer processing. Smart Disable by default should be on. The only catch with Smart Disable is that long reverb trails would get cut off, but that's fine. They will play out fully when you render. Smart Disable is turned off during a render, and this will save you a lot of CPU resources with it toggled on. Sample rate, I recommend 44.1 kilohertz. That's what ImageLine recommends as well. The higher the sample rate, the higher the demand on the CPU, so stick with just the standard, 44.1. I also recommend making sure that this is on. It should be on by default. Force high performance power plan. So over in general, when you scroll to the bottom, this is gonna ensure that your power settings in Windows are at the highest performance possible just to help. Any little bit of performance we can squeeze out of your CPU is gonna help a lot. Next, a little bit more niche is the PPQ or pulses per quarter. Over in project in settings, we can see this, the time base, it's set to 96. Now setting this really high, this is responsible for the resolution of automations, events, notes and whatnot. Setting it really high increases the resolution of those events but it is gonna have a big hit on the CPU. So leave it at 96 unless you know what you're doing. Maybe you're doing something orchestral, something that needs very granular detail with the automations and whatnot. Set it to 96. The higher you crank this up, 
the higher the demand on CPU. In fact, you could reduce this slightly to assist, but I just leave this at 96. Another thing over in MIDI is if you're not using MIDI, go ahead and disable this. So MIDI enabled actually uses CPU and ImageLine talks about this in their manual, even if not used. So I would turn off MIDI if you're not using a MIDI controller, if you're not using something like that, turn it off because turning it off will save you some CPU resources. Another thing to free up CPU resources is if your RAM permits, if you have enough RAM, go ahead and make sure that you're not using keep on disk. When you leave it off, it avoids underruns caused by disk to RAM. That transition from disk to RAM is gonna take a toll on your CPU. So even though it might seem enticing to turn everything on keep on disk, if you have enough RAM, leave it off. Let it be in the RAM and that's gonna spare your CPU, avoiding that going back and forth from disk to RAM. Finally, if you have maybe a lot of plugins and you're trying to wonder, well, why is it that my RAM is going crazy? Why is it that my CPU is taking a big toll? And you're wondering, what's the culprit? If you go ahead to view and you go to plugin performance monitor, you can see which plugins are taking up the most resources. So taking a look at this, I can see that Pro L2 by FabFilter is taking up the most. We can see the percentage and we can see the delay amounts, the peak and the time, and also in seconds. So the most demanding are at the top and the least demanding are over at the bottom. I can see that Pro L2, Expander, Endless Smile, a bunch of these are kind of going back and forth. So if maybe something is super demanding, come over to Plugin Performance Monitor, take a look and consider if you might want to not use that plugin, maybe you want to bounce what you have so that way you're not dealing with it in real time. Just small things that you can do that can go a long way. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, a quick video to free up RAM resources, GPU, CPU, as well as finding performance culprits with the plugin performance monitor. If you guys enjoyed this video, remember to smash up the like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and that way you're alerted of the uploads. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.